Hello everyone, I'm Aaron, a birding naturalist. Welcome back to my channel. I, on this foggy morning in the Delta, went out walking around just to see what I could see, and I found something really cool. Check these out. Amanita muscaria. What's Amanita muscaria? So glad you asked. Amanita muscaria are that classic red mushroom with the white dots that everyone associates with poison. Poison, poison, poison. But a little more complicated than that. Amanita muscaria are, as you can tell from the Latin name, a member of the genus Amanita. Amanitas include a bunch of very poisonous mushrooms. They also do include a couple of edible mushrooms, but you want to really proceed with caution because the poisonous ones are really poisonous. And I think that's probably one of the reasons why we associate Amanita muscaria specifically with poison. That iconic toadstool shape with the red, which is bright and evokes the idea of danger, and the white speckling is pretty eye-catching. It's this amazing standout fungus. And because it is poisonous and is associated with other mushrooms that are also poisonous, I think that we've formed this association almost culturally of, oh, that's a poisonous mushroom. But the really poisonous Amanitas are actually beautiful, pure white mushrooms. The Amanita muscaria, the red one with the white speckles, is actually not as poisonous as many of its close relatives. Now, it is poisonous. It'll make you sick, you probably throw up quite a bit, you hallucinate, like it's not a great thing to eat. But it is not the most toxic Amanita that's out there. Amanita muscaria are really interesting in that they are native to like the entire northern hemisphere of planet Earth. Um, every continent, they are often associated with conifer woodlands, deciduous woodlands. They're very generalist, very cosmopolitan, very wide-ranging in their symbiotic interactions, which is another really interesting thing about them. Amanita muscaria forms what are called mycorrhizal symbiotic associations with a bunch of different kinds of trees. What does that mean? Well, under the ground is where the body of a fungus really lives. It's not the mushroom. The mushroom is the apple on the tree. The rest of the tree, right? Mushroom is just the fruit, just the apple on the tree. The rest of the tree is this network of very fine little, usually white sort of thread-like structures that are called mycelium, made of hyphae. Each individual strand is called a hyphae. And those hyphae can sometimes, under the ground, associate with the tiny little rootlets of trees. And so they form these connections where they can actually exchange nutrients and resources back and forth between the fungus and the tree. Now, there are some species that, you know, one species of fungus forms an association with one species of tree, and that's it. They're very tightly linked. Amina muscaria is a generalist. It will form these kinds of interactions with oaks, pines, firs, cedars, lots of different kinds of trees. I'm underneath a bunch of cottonwoods, so it's probably forming these associations with the cottonwoods that I'm uh, sitting amongst. Another really fun thing about Amanita, and this is true of all Amanita, not just Muscaria, but I found a bunch of great examples right here, are its growth pattern. Amanitas, when they are very, very small, start with these little tiny balls, entirely encased in this sort of white membrane. And as they grow, they expand, and that white membrane starts to break up in forming these little sort of remnant sections, little things that will eventually become the white dots on the red top of the Amanita's cap. But grows and grows and grows, pushing out from its center, pushing away the leaves and bark and branches that it may have been growing underneath, 
Mushrooms can be very strong. They can push a lot of stuff out of their way. Rising up, their cap expands, sort of forms this beautiful bell structure when it's sort of in its juvenile stage. And eventually gets up bigger and taller and flares out to its sort of full mature uh, shape. That's when most of the spores are launched out of the gills, dispersed on the wind, carried around, hopefully landing someplace where they can grow and form the next generation of mushrooms. As the mushroom continues to mature, it gets even wider, flared out, just kind of loses its color and kind of starts to deteriorate and break apart, eventually falling over its nutrients being recycled back into the soil and starting the whole nutrient cycle off again, sort of completing its fruiting body sort of lifespan. But remember, that's just the end of the fruiting body. That is just like the, the, the process I've just described is sort of like watching a tiny little nub of an apple come out of the, the tree that it's growing on, right? The flower dies back and this tiny little fruit starts to form. And that fruit grows and grows and grows and it changes. It changes color often. It'll get really big. Things happen to it biochemically, like a lot of sugars develop. It eventually ripens and then kind of over ripens, falls off the tree and deteriorates, right? That's kind of the life cycle of an apple. The same thing has just happened to the life cycle of a mushroom. But while the apple can grow, over ripen, fall, deteriorate, the tree is just fine. And so true, so is true with the, the mycelium of amanitas and most other fungi. The fruiting bodies, the mushrooms, can go through this whole cycle, releasing their spores and then deteriorating and dying off. But the mycelium underground is just fine. And it will live there for years and years and years and years, fruiting every year, annually, over and over and over again, just cranking away, living its happy life. These particular ones are honestly some of the biggest Amanita muscaria I've ever found. These adults, the, the full-size, big, mature uh, caps, are easily seven or eight inches across, maybe nine. They're big mushrooms. I've never seen them this big. I was pretty excited. Uh, and to see so many stages in the life cycle as they are developing all in the same place was also really exciting. Right now is when you really see a lot of Amanita muscaria coming up kind of in the late fall, early winter. Um, we're getting into sort of mushroom season as a lot of moisture comes to California and sort of the western U.S. So it's going to be fun to see what other fungi uh, come up in the coming weeks and months. I do hope that you enjoyed uh, this video on Amanita muscaria. I hope you learned a little something about it. Definitely, if you do ever touch one, they're safe to touch. Just wash your hands before you eat anything. Uh, and like I said, I would not recommend eating the Amanita muscaria themselves. Thank you very much for the view. Subscribe to the channel. And until next time, enjoy the natural world.